America votes for the zombie apocalypse. America decides, zombie apocalypse marginally preferable to Trump or Biden presidency. Basically, the U.S. has chosen death. The U.S. chooses death. By Seth Satirical Sage. In a move that stunned political pundits, left many analysts scratching their heads, and caused a collective sigh of relief, America has spoken, we prefer the brain dead over the brash or the bland. That's right, in a historic election unlike any other, citizens across this great nation have overwhelmingly voted for a zombie apocalypse instead of enduring four more years of either Donald Trump or Joe Biden. The voting booths were eerily quiet this year, as a noticeable lack of enthusiasm for the usual suspects turned the tide toward the living dead. The final tallies were staggering, with the zombie party securing 60% of the popular vote, proving once and for all that Americans are ready for a different kind of decay in leadership. This is a clear mandate from the people, explained Zombie Party spokesperson, Zed Rotter. The electorate has decided that a world where rotting corpses roam the streets in search of brains is preferable to the current political landscape. And we couldn't be more thrilled. It's no secret that the 2024 election season was fraught with unparalleled discontent. On one side, we had Donald Trump, whose campaign rallies often felt like they were one tweet away from summoning the four horsemen of the apocalypse. On the other, we had Joe Biden, whose speeches sometimes resembled a verbal game of bingo, with phrases like come on, man. And look, here's the deal making more frequent appearances than new policy ideas. The debates, if you could call them that, were a true highlight. Watching Trump and Biden clash was akin to watching two elderly gentlemen argue over the last prune at the breakfast buffet. He's sleepy, Trump would jab. He's orange, Biden would retort. Meanwhile, America was left wondering if it was possible for both to lose. And lose they did, spectacularly. The final straw may have been when both candidates released their Halloween plans. Trump announced he would dress as a bigly ghost and go around demanding candy from everyone, insisting, nobody trick or treats better than me. Believe me. Biden, on the other hand, intended to dress as a regular American and knock on doors asking, what's the deal with these darn kids and their Snapchats? Thus, the nation turned to the zombie apocalypse. Sure, zombies come with their own set of challenges, a little more flesh-eating, a tad less coherent dialogue. But, on the bright side, there's no partisan bickering when everyone's just trying to survive. And think of the bipartisan opportunities. Democrats and Republicans could unite on common goals like how do we keep our brains inside our skulls? And should we really save Jeff from accounting if he gets bitten? Critics argue that the zombie apocalypse is a risky choice, but proponents quickly point out that at least zombies are straightforward. They don't lie, cheat, or tweet. They have one objective, to eat brains. And, honestly, who among us hasn't felt that craving during a particularly tedious conference call? The inauguration ceremony for our new zombie overlords is set to be a low-key affair. The newly elected zombie in chief, formerly known as Carl from Ohio, has promised to lead with an open mind, mostly because the top of his skull is missing. His first executive order, ensuring everyone gets a fair shot at surviving the first 100 days, provided they can outrun the undead horde. As we brace ourselves for this new chapter in American history, one thing is clear, at least it's not another four years of Trump or Biden. So, let's sharpen our axes, fortify our homes, and get ready for a presidency that truly reflects the will of the people, or at least their desire to try something, anything, different. And hey, if all else fails, we can always just vote for werewolves in 2028. The zombie party, the new face, or lack thereof, of American politics. The emergence of the zombie party marks a historic shift in American politics. Born out of widespread disillusionment with traditional political factions, the Zombie Party offers a refreshingly direct approach to governance. Founded by a diverse coalition of former doomsday preppers, Halloween enthusiasts, and disgruntled voters, the party's slogan, Brains Over Bluster, has resonated with millions. Here's a closer look at what the Zombie Party stands for and what it hopes to achieve economically and socially. Economic Policies, More Brains, Less Bureaucracy The Zombie Party's economic platform is surprisingly robust, considering the members' primary focus is usually consuming human flesh. 
However, the party's leaders, who include a former hedge fund manager turned zombie and a surprisingly articulate undead CPA, have crafted a series of policies designed to stimulate growth and foster innovation. 1. Universal Brain Fair Under the Zombie Party's plan, everyone is guaranteed access to high quality brains. This initiative aims to reduce hunger and ensure that no zombie is left without a meal. While initially controversial, proponents argue that the policy promotes social cohesion by addressing one of the most fundamental needs. 2. Decomposing debt Recognizing that the national debt is as relentless as a zombie horde, the Zombie Party has proposed a novel solution decomposing debt. By issuing bonds that mature over the course of 100 years, they believe that the future generations, if they survive, can handle the payoff. Plus, with most current economists predicting the apocalypse any day now, long-term debt might not even be a concern. 3. Graveyard Shift Tax Breaks To incentivize employment among the undead, the Zombie Party is offering tax breaks for companies that hire zombies for overnight shifts. This policy not only boosts employment but also taps into the zombie's natural nocturnal productivity. Social Policies, Unity Through Undeath Socially, the Zombie Party promotes a platform of inclusivity and, perhaps ironically, life-affirming community engagement. Their policies aim to bridge the divide between the living and the undead, fostering a society where both can coexist peacefully. 1. Brains for All, a comprehensive program to ensure brain equality. No longer will the rich zombies feast while the poor zombies starve. This initiative seeks to distribute brains fairly across all socioeconomic undead classes. 2. Rotting Rights, advocating for the rights of zombies to live, well, unlive, free from discrimination. This includes anti-discrimination laws in housing, employment, and access to public services, ensuring zombies are treated as equals in all areas of society. 3. Living in Undead Together, LUT, initiatives, promoting community activities that bring the living and undead together, such as zombie five Burmese chats where humans and zombies jog together, albeit at different paces, and brunch with brains, a Sunday gathering where humans enjoy mimosas while zombies feast on their preferred delicacy, ethically sourced, of course. Foreign Policy, Brains Without Borders The Zombie Party's foreign policy is surprisingly progressive. Acknowledging that the zombie virus knows no borders, they aim to foster international cooperation in dealing with the undead threat. Their main initiatives include 1. Global Brain Trust, an international coalition to ensure brain resources are shared globally, reducing the likelihood of international conflict over brain shortages. 2. Zombie Diplomacy, establishing diplomatic corps of zombies to promote peace and understanding worldwide. These ambassadors are trained to present a non-threatening demeanor and have been instrumental in diffusing tensions, mainly by their sheer persistence in negotiations. 3. Undead United Nations, proposing the formation of an undead United Nations, where zombies and humans from around the world can come together to address issues of mutual concern, from climate change to the ethical treatment of the undead. In summary, the Zombie Party stands for a future where economic vitality and social unity reign supreme, with policies that are, dare we say, brainy and inclusive. As America embarks on this unprecedented journey, one thing is clear, the zombie party has injected new life, or unlife, into the political arena, proving that even in the darkest times, there's a glimmer of hope and maybe a hint of humor lurking in the shadows. Donald Trump's take on the zombie party, a catalogue of exaggeration and goofballery. In true Trumpian fashion, the emergence of the zombie party has not gone unnoticed by former President Donald Trump. Never one to miss an opportunity for colorful commentary, Trump has unleashed a barrage of exaggerated and goofball statements against the zombie party. Below, we examine some of his most memorable zingers, quips, and claims about this unprecedented political movement. They're bringing their worst brains. In a rally that could only be described as quintessentially Trump, the former president took the stage in front of an enthusiastic crowd in Florida. Folks, let me tell you, these zombies, they're not sending their best. They're bringing their worst brains, believe me. And you know what? Some of those brains are terrible, absolutely terrible. Low IQ, very low quality. It's a disaster. Trump's claim that zombies were bringing subpar brains into the country struck a chord with his base, who cheered wildly. This statement, of course, overlooks the fact that zombies don't exactly have a choice in brain quality. It's less about selection and more about availability, 
but such nuances were never a stumbling block for Trump's rhetoric. The smell worse than a Democrat's policies. In his signature hyperbolic style, Trump didn't shy away from making sensory-based critiques. Have you ever smelled one of these zombies? Worse than a Democrat's policies. I'm telling you, folks, it's horrible. And I know a thing or two about smells. Believe me, I've built some of the best hotels in the world, and they smell great. Tremendous smells. But these zombies? Total stench. Trump's comparison of zombies' odor to Democratic policies was a two-for-one insult, allowing him to jab both the undead and his perennial political adversaries. The imagery of zombies shambling around with a foul odor became a recurring theme in his speeches, much to the delight of his supporters. They want to eat your brains and your jobs. In a town hall meeting in Ohio, Trump ramped up the fear factor. These zombies, folks, they don't just want to eat your brains, they want to eat your jobs, too. They're coming for everything. Your jobs, your homes, your neighborhoods. It's an invasion, the likes of which we've never seen before. This statement played into the classic Trumpian theme of invasion and job theft, albeit in a more fantastical context. The idea that zombies could somehow take over jobs added a new layer of absurdity to the discourse, but it was effective in stirring up anxiety and outrage among his followers. Zombies? I've seen better leaders at my rallies. During a rally in Texas, Trump made a swipe at the leadership qualities of the zombie party. Look at their leaders. Total disasters. I've seen better leaders at my rallies, and some of them were just there for the free hats. But seriously, folks, these zombie leaders? Not good. They don't negotiate, they don't make deals, they just shuffle around. Sad. The critique of zombie leadership was another classic Trump move, discrediting opponents by highlighting their perceived incompetence. The image of zombies shuffling aimlessly while trying to lead a nation was both humorous and scathing. I have the best brains, way better than any zombie. In a moment of self-aggrandizement, Trump couldn't resist comparing himself directly to the zombies. Everyone knows I have the best brains. Way better than any zombies, believe me. My brain is so good, so strong. It's why we won in 2016, and it's why we'll win again. Zombies? They can't even come close. Sad. This statement showcased Trump's trademark blend of self-praise and denigration of his opponents. The absurdity of comparing his brains to those of zombies didn't deter him from making the claim, and his audience ate it up, metaphorically speaking. Zombie apocalypse? Sounds like a Democrat plan to me. In a bid to tie the zombie party to his Democratic rivals, Trump suggested that the entire apocalypse might be a ploy. This zombie apocalypse? Sounds like a Democrat plan to me. They've always wanted to destroy America, and now they're doing it with zombies. Coincidence? I don't think so. They're all in cahoots. Fake news won't tell you this, but it's true. Conspiracy theories have always been a staple of Trump's rhetoric, and the zombie party gave him ample material to work with. By suggesting a link between the Democrats and the undead, he tapped into the fears and suspicions of his base, further solidifying their loyalty. We need a wall, a big, beautiful wall to keep out the zombies. In a final flourish of classic Trump policy, he revisited one of his most famous campaign promises. You know what we need? A wall. A big, beautiful wall to keep out the zombies. And we'll make the zombies pay for it. They're not sending their best, so they can send their money instead. The idea of a wall to keep out zombies was both a humorous callback to his 2016 campaign and a satirical twist on his immigration policies. The logistics of zombies paying for a wall were, of course, nonsensical, but that was part of the charm. I can outrun any zombie, believe me. In a final, audacious claim, Trump assured his supporters of his physical superiority. Folks, I can outrun any zombie. Believe me. I'm fast. Very fast. These zombies? They're slow. I've got more stamina, more speed, more everything. If they come for me, they're in for a big surprise. This boast rounded out Trump's barrage of exaggerated statements, 
painting him as not only intellectually but also physically superior to the undead. It was the perfect capstone to a series of outlandish critiques that entertained, alarmed, and energized his audience. In the end, Trump's statements about the zombie party were a masterclass in exaggerated rhetoric, blending fear, humor, and self-aggrandizement in a way only he could. Whether you laughed, cringed, or shook your head, one thing is certain, the zombie party has injected a new level of absurdity into American politics, and Trump was right there to capitalize on it. Joe Biden's Take on the Zombie Party a collection of folksy and goofball remarks. Not to be outdone in the arena of exaggerated and goofball commentary, President Joe Biden has also weighed in on the rise of the zombie party with his own unique blend of folksy charm and bewildering statements. Biden's critiques are peppered with his trademark Uncle Joe vibe, combined with the occasional head-scratcher that leaves audiences amused and scratching their heads in equal measure. Below, we explore some of Biden's most memorable remarks about the zombie party. Come on, man, zombies? Really? At a town hall meeting in Scranton, Biden opened with a line that encapsulated his disbelief. Come on, man, zombies? Really? We're better than this. We've got real issues to tackle, climate change, healthcare, jobs. And now we're talking about zombies? Give me a break. Biden's incredulity was evident as he tried to steer the conversation back to what he considered more pressing issues. His down-to-earth manner was intended to resonate with voters who might feel that the focus on zombies was a distraction from serious policy discussions. Back in my day, we dealt with real problems. In an address to a group of senior citizens in Florida, Biden reminisced about his past. Folks, back in my day, we dealt with real problems. We had the Cold War, civil rights movements, real tough stuff. Now we're worried about zombies? I've seen some scary things in my time, but this takes the cake. This nostalgic appeal was typical of Biden's style, aiming to draw a contrast between the serious issues of yesteryear and the seemingly absurd focus on a zombie apocalypse. His audience, largely composed of those who shared his memories of past struggles, responded with knowing nods and chuckles. Zombies don't pay taxes. Speaking at a campaign fundraiser, Biden zeroed in on an economic angle. Let me tell you something, folks. Zombies don't pay taxes. They don't contribute to social security, they don't invest in our infrastructure. How are we supposed to build back better if our new citizens are brain-eating corpses? It's just common sense. Biden's attempt to highlight the practical implications of a zombie population was both humorous and pointed. By framing zombies as economic deadweight, he aimed to underscore the impracticality of the zombie party's platform. Can't we just give them a shot of the vaccine? In a lighthearted moment during a press briefing, Biden tried to offer a solution. You know, I've been thinking. We've got these great vaccines now. Can't we just give the zombies a shot? Maybe it'll fix them right up. We've got to try something, right? This remark drew laughter from the press corps, showcasing Biden's ability to inject humor into his commentary. While clearly not a serious policy proposal, the suggestion played into his image as a leader who's willing to think outside the box, even if that box is filled with zombies. They'll just shuffle around the White House. During a speech in Delaware, Biden speculated about the practical challenges of a zombie administration. Imagine a zombie president. They'll just shuffle around the White House, drooling on important documents. We need someone who can think on their feet, not someone whose feet are falling off. This vivid imagery was classic Biden, combining humor with a critique of the zombie party's suitability for governance. The mental picture of zombies aimlessly wandering the halls of power was both amusing and unsettling for his audience. Hey, at least they don't tweet. In a moment of levity, Biden made a veiled jab at his predecessor. You know what? At least the zombies don't tweet. I'll give them that. We won't be waking up to a new zombie tweet storm every morning. Small blessings, folks, small blessings. This remark earned hearty laughter and applause, as it poked fun at Trump's notorious Twitter habits. By framing the absence of tweets as a silver lining, Biden managed to criticize both the zombies and Trump in one fell swoop. We can't have a cabinet full of brain eaters. At a rally in Michigan, Biden took aim at the idea of a zombie-led government. 
Can you imagine a cabinet full of brain eaters? Secretary of State? More like Secretary of Brains. And the Surgeon General? I don't even want to think about it. We need competent leaders, not flesh eating ghouls. This hyperbolic scenario was meant to highlight the absurdity of the zombie party's rise, using humor to drive home the point that zombies are not fit for public office. His supporters laughed and cheered, appreciating the theatricality of his critique. Look, folks, I've faced tougher opponents. In a classic Biden moment of self deprecation and bravado, he reassured his supporters. Look, folks, I've faced tougher opponents than zombies. I've gone toe to toe with world leaders, negotiated with the best of them. Zombies? They're just the latest challenge. We'll handle it. This statement was meant to boost confidence and remind voters of Biden's extensive experience in dealing with complex issues. His casual dismissal of the zombie threat as just another challenge reinforced his image as a seasoned leader. Let's focus on living people's problems. In a closing remark at a virtual town hall, Biden brought the discussion back to everyday concerns. We've got plenty of problems to solve for the living. Let's focus on healthcare, education, and jobs. Zombies might make for good movies, but in real life, we've got real work to do. Let's roll up our sleeves and get it done. This appeal to pragmatism was typical of Biden's style, urging voters to concentrate on tangible issues rather than getting sidetracked by the fantastical. His emphasis on practical solutions over sensational distractions aimed to ground the political discourse in reality. A zombie in every pot? During a late-night talk show appearance, Biden joked about the zombie party's potential campaign promises. What's next? A zombie in every pot? It's like they're living in a B-movie from the 50s. We need leaders with real vision, not just night vision. This quip highlighted the absurdity of the zombie party's platform, likening their promises to outlandish B-movie scenarios. The audience's laughter underscored the effectiveness of his humor in discrediting the undead upstarts. In summary, Biden's statements about the zombie party were a blend of folksy wisdom, humorous jabs, and exaggerated scenarios. His approach combined practical concerns with lighthearted ridicule, painting a picture of the zombie party as an amusing but ultimately impractical alternative. As the political landscape continues to evolve, Biden's commentary serves as a reminder that even in the face of absurdity, a little humor can go a long way in engaging and reassuring the electorate. Kamala Harris's take on the zombie party, a mix of useless but sassy remarks. Vice President Kamala Harris, known for her sharp wit and prosecutorial style, has not held back in her commentary on the zombie party. Harris's critiques are marked by a blend of pointed humor, exaggerated claims, and occasional slips into the downright absurd. Below, we delve into some of her most memorable and outlandish statements against the zombie party. Zombies for equality? Give me a break. In a speech to a progressive think tank in Washington, D.C., Harris dismissed the zombie party's claims of advocating for equality. Zombies for equality? Give me a break. These are creatures that literally want to eat your brains. How can you have equality with someone who views you as a snack? It's absurd, folks. Truly absurd. Harris's statement aimed to undermine the zombie party's progressive claims by highlighting the inherent conflict in their basic nature. While obviously exaggerated, her point was clear, zombies, by their very nature, cannot contribute to a fair and just society. Zombies don't understand consent. Speaking at a university event, Harris made a passionate plea about the importance of consent, cleverly roping in the zombie party for effect. Zombies don't understand consent. They just take what they want without asking, your brains. We need leaders who respect personal boundaries, not ones who are constantly crossing them. This remark drew laughter and applause, emphasizing Harris's knack for turning serious social issues into humorous yet pointed critiques of the zombie party. By equating zombies with a fundamental lack of understanding about consent, she underscored their unsuitability for leadership. Do zombies even vote? In a discussion on voting rights, Harris questioned the legitimacy of the zombie party's electoral support. Do zombies even vote? I mean, how does that work? They don't have the cognitive functions to fill out a ballot. 
We need to make sure our elections are secure and that every vote is legitimate. Zombie votes? That's a hard no. Harris's statement played into broader concerns about election integrity, albeit in a humorous and exaggerated manner. The image of zombies attempting to vote was both ridiculous and effective in highlighting potential electoral absurdities. What's their health care plan? More brains? At a healthcare forum, Harris mocked the zombie party's lack of a coherent healthcare plan. What's their healthcare plan? More brains? Folks, we need real solutions to our healthcare crisis, not a party that thinks eating brains is a viable option. Let's get serious. This quip underscored Harris's disdain for the zombie party's perceived lack of substance. By reducing their healthcare policy to a single absurd element, she aimed to highlight the party's inadequacies in addressing real-world issues. They're dead inside, literally and figuratively. In a fiery rally speech in California, Harris didn't mince words. The zombie party? They're dead inside, literally and figuratively. We need leaders with heart, soul, and vision, not a bunch of brainless corpses shuffling around. We deserve better. This statement, while exaggerated, played on the literal nature of zombies being undead. Harris used this metaphor to question the zombie party's ability to lead with passion and empathy, traits she deemed essential for effective governance. What's next? A zombie treasury secretary? During a television interview, Harris took a jab at the potential appointments under a zombie party administration. What's next? A zombie treasury secretary? Can you imagine a zombie managing our economy? We'd be in worse shape than we are now, and that's saying something. The notion of a zombie holding a key economic position was both humorous and horrifying. Harris used this exaggeration to illustrate the absurdity of the zombie party's governance potential, emphasizing the need for competent and alive leaders. Zombies and climate change? They'll just make it worse. At an environmental summit, Harris linked the zombie party to environmental concerns. Zombies and climate change? They'll just make it worse. They have no regard for the planet. They'll trample through forests, pollute our waters, and cause chaos. We need leaders who will fight for our environment, not destroy it. This statement drew on the chaotic and destructive nature of zombies, painting them as environmentally harmful. By exaggerating their impact on climate change, Harris aimed to position herself and her party as the true stewards of environmental protection. Their foreign policy? Eat first, ask questions never. In a speech on foreign policy, Harris critiqued the zombie party's potential diplomatic approach. Their foreign policy? Eat first, ask questions never. We need diplomacy, tact, and strategy in dealing with other nations. Zombies can't even negotiate a handshake, let alone a peace treaty. The hyperbolic depiction of zombies as incapable of basic diplomatic functions highlighted the impracticality of their leadership in international relations. Harris used humor to underscore the serious need for competent and strategic foreign policy. Brain drain? More like brain gain for them. At an education reform event, Harris made a pun-filled jab at the zombie party's impact on intellectual resources. We talk about brain drain in education, but with the zombie party, it's more like brain gaining for them. They're literally draining our brains. We need to invest in our kids' futures, not feed them to the undead. This clever play on words served to highlight the importance of education while mocking the zombie party's brain-centric agenda. Harris used humor to connect with her audience while making a serious point about the need for educational investment. Zombies in the White House? We've seen enough horror movies. In a lighthearted conclusion to a press conference, Harris wrapped up her thoughts on the zombie party. Zombies in the White House? We've seen enough horror movies to know how that ends. Let's keep the horror on the big screen and the competence in the Oval Office. By comparing the idea of a zombie led government to a horror movie, Harris effectively used cultural references to make her point. The imagery resonated with audiences familiar with zombie films reinforcing the absurdity of the zombie party's political aspirations. In summary, Kamala Harris's statements about the zombie party were a mix of humor, exaggeration, and pointed critique. 
Her remarks aim to underscore the impracticality and absurdity of a zombie-led government while engaging her audience with wit and relatable references. Through these exaggerated and goofball statements, Harris effectively conveyed her message that leadership requires more than just a hunger for brains, it requires heart, vision, and a commitment to real solutions. The Speaker of the House's take on the zombie party, a parade of exaggerated and ridiculous statements. The Speaker of the House, wielding both authority and a flair for dramatic rhetoric, has not shied away from lambasting the zombie party with a series of exaggerated and often ridiculous statements. Whether the Speaker is a Democrat or a Republican, their critique of the zombie party is packed with hyperbole and theatrical flourishes designed to highlight the absurdity of the undead political movement. Below, we explore some of the most common and expected exaggerated statements made by the Speaker of the House against the zombie party. They're literally deadweight. In a fiery address to the House of Representatives, the Speaker pulled no punches. The zombie party is literally deadweight. How can we expect progress when half our leaders are decomposing? We need vibrant, living minds to tackle the challenges of our nation, not a bunch of deadbeats, literally. This statement, while clearly hyperbolic, played on the literal state of zombies as the undead. By calling them deadweight, the speaker emphasized the impracticality of zombies contributing effectively to legislative progress. Brains for brains? More like brainless policies. At a press conference, the speaker mocked the zombie party's platform. Their motto might as well be brains for brains, because their policies are completely brainless. They offer no real solutions, just a mindless pursuit of one thing, brains. We need comprehensive policies, not one-track minds. This quip cleverly used wordplay to underscore the perceived lack of substance in the zombie party's platform. The suggestion that their focus on brains translates to brainless policies highlighted the speaker's view that the party lacks depth and vision. Undead and unaccountable. In a committee hearing, the speaker raised concerns about accountability. How do we hold a zombie accountable? They don't feel shame, they don't understand consequences. The zombie party's members are literally unaccountable. We need leaders who can be held responsible for their actions, not ones who are impervious to reason and morality. This exaggerated concern about accountability underscored the speaker's belief that zombies are fundamentally unfit for political office. The notion that zombies lack a sense of responsibility was used to question their suitability for leadership roles. Their infrastructure plan? Just rot and decay. During a debate on infrastructure, the speaker ridiculed the zombie party's potential contributions. Can you imagine their infrastructure plan? Just rot and decay. They'll turn our roads and bridges into crumbling ruins. We need a robust plan to rebuild America, not let it fall apart at the hands of the undead. By painting a picture of literal decay, the speaker dramatized the potential negative impact of the zombie party's involvement in infrastructure. This exaggerated claim aimed to evoke fear and concern about the physical state of the nation under zombie leadership. Zombie economics? More like necroeconomics. At an economic forum, the speaker coined a new term to criticize the zombie party's economic policies. They talk about zombie economics, but it's more like necroeconomics. Their ideas are dead on arrival and will drag our economy into the grave. We need innovative solutions, not undead delusions. This clever play on words combined necrosis, the death of cells, with economics to paint the zombie party's economic policies as lifeless and destructive. The term necroeconomics became a buzzword, capturing the speaker's disdain for the party's economic agenda. Healthcare? They're the health hazard. In a town hall meeting focused on healthcare, the speaker made a dramatic point. The zombie party in charge of healthcare? They're the health hazard. How can we trust our health system to those who are literally falling apart? We need to protect our healthcare system from decay, not hand it over to the undead. By labeling the zombie party as a health hazard, the speaker highlighted the absurdity of zombies overseeing healthcare. This exaggerated claim underscored the importance of competent and healthy leadership in managing public health. Education? They want to turn our schools into horror shows. At an education policy conference, the speaker warned about the zombie party's impact on schools. Imagine zombies running our education system. Our schools would turn into horror shows. 
We need educators who inspire and nurture, not ones who terrify and consume. Our children deserve better. This statement used vivid imagery to dramatize the potential consequences of zombie involvement in education. By likening schools under zombie control to horror shows, the speaker aimed to stir up protective instincts among parents and educators. Climate change? Zombies are the walking environmental disasters. During a speech on environmental policy, the speaker linked zombies to environmental harm. Zombies are walking environmental disasters. They trample ecosystems, spread decay, and contribute nothing to sustainability. We need leaders who will fight climate change, not add to the chaos and destruction. This exaggerated claim tied the zombie party to broader concerns about environmental degradation. By depicting zombies as inherently harmful to the environment, the speaker sought to highlight the need for environmentally conscious leadership. National security? Zombies are a breach in our defenses. At a national security briefing, the speaker raised alarms about the zombie party's impact on security. Zombies in charge of national security? That's a breach in our defenses. They're a threat, not a solution. We need vigilant, strategic minds protecting our nation, not mindless creatures roaming our defense departments. This hyperbolic statement emphasized the perceived danger of zombies handling national security. By framing zombies as a threat, the speaker underscored the need for competent and alert leaders in defense roles. Foreign policy? They'll turn allies into appetizers. In a discussion on foreign relations, the speaker humorously critiqued the zombie party's diplomatic potential. Their foreign policy will turn our allies into appetizers. We need diplomacy, negotiation, and respect in our international relations, not brain-eating disasters. This exaggerated and humorous remark highlighted the impracticality of zombies in diplomatic roles. By suggesting that zombies would consume allies, the speaker illustrated the absurdity of zombie-led foreign policy. In summary, the Speaker of the House's statements against the zombie party are a mix of hyperbole, humor, and vivid imagery designed to underscore the absurdity of the undead political movement. Through exaggerated claims and dramatic scenarios, the Speaker aims to convey the message that zombies are fundamentally unfit for leadership, emphasizing the need for competent, living leaders to tackle the nation's challenges. Elon Musk's ambiguous support for the zombie party, a blend of innovation, humor, and confusion. Elon Musk, the enigmatic CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, is known for his unconventional and often cryptic public statements. His support for the zombie party, while ambiguous, is marked by a mix of humor, futuristic thinking, and typical Muskian bewilderment. Below, we explore some of the most common and expected ambiguous statements made by Elon Musk in favor of the zombie party. Zombies? They're the ultimate disruptors. In a tweet that quickly went viral, Musk remarked, Zombies? They're the ultimate disruptors. Who needs traditional governance when you can have brains driving innovation? Musk's statement played on his reputation as a disruptor in the tech and automotive industries. By labeling zombies as disruptors, he ambiguously suggested that their presence could shake up the status quo in a way that might lead to unexpected innovations. This statement left many wondering whether he was genuinely supportive or simply being sarcastic. Imagine the synergy of Neuralink and zombie brains. During a Neuralink presentation, Musk speculated about the potential integration of zombie brains with his brain machine interface technology. Imagine the synergy of Neuralink and zombie brains. We could create a whole new form of intelligence. It's both terrifying and fascinating. This ambiguous endorsement seemed to blur the lines between genuine scientific curiosity and a humorous what-if scenario. Musk's fascination with merging human and machine intelligence took a bizarre turn, leaving audiences unsure if he was serious about exploring this macabre synergy. Tesla bot with zombie intelligence? Intriguing possibilities. In another tweet, Musk mused, what if we combine Tesla bot with zombie intelligence? Intriguing possibilities for labor efficiency. They don't tire, and they have a single-minded focus. Musk's statement highlighted his interest in automation and robotics while ambiguously flirting with the idea of using zombie-like persistence and resilience. The tweet, dripping with dark humor, suggested a dystopian future where zombies could play a role in the workforce, leaving his followers both amused and perplexed. 
Zombies on Mars? Let's push the boundaries of exploration. During a SpaceX Q&A session, Musk entertained a question about the zombie party's potential role in space exploration. Zombies on Mars? Why not? Let's push the boundaries of exploration. They don't need oxygen, and they're not afraid of harsh environments. This ambiguous endorsement was classic Musk, combining his passion for space exploration with a tongue-in-cheek suggestion. While it seemed unlikely that he seriously considered sending zombies to Mars, the statement reflected his broader philosophy of pushing limits and exploring uncharted territories. Brain-eating or brainstorming? Why not both? In a cryptic tweet, Musk wrote, brain-eating or brainstorming? Why not both? Zombies could bring a whole new perspective to problem-solving. This statement was quintessential Musk blending humor, ambiguity, and a hint of genuine curiosity. By suggesting that zombies might offer unique insights, Musk played with the idea that unconventional thinking, even from zombies, could lead to breakthroughs. It was a prime example of his knack for sparking debate and speculation with seemingly offhand remarks. The Zombie Party, a case study in resilience. During a TED talk, Musk referenced the Zombie Party in a discussion about resilience. The Zombie Party is a case study in resilience. They keep coming back, no matter what. We could learn a lot about persistence and adaptability from them. Musk's comment was ambiguously supportive, highlighting a quality he often values, resilience. By framing the zombie party as an example of unwavering persistence, he drew a parallel to the tenacity required for entrepreneurial success, leaving the audience to interpret whether he was seriously advocating for zombies or merely using them as a metaphor. Boring company tunnels, perfect for zombie evacuation routes? In a humorous yet ambiguous tweet, Musk suggested boring company tunnels, perfect for zombie evacuation routes? Just a thought. This statement was typical of Musk's blend of humor and innovation. While clearly not a serious policy proposal, it played on the public's fascination with zombies and urban infrastructure. The tweet showcased his ability to connect his various ventures to current events and pop culture in a way that kept people guessing about his true intentions. AI and Zombies, a match made in sci-fi heaven? At an AI conference, Musk speculated on the intersection of artificial intelligence and zombies. AI and Zombies, a match made in sci-fi heaven? Combining the relentless drive of zombies with AI could lead to some interesting developments. Musk's ambiguous support for the zombie party through this statement merged his interest in AI with the fictional allure of zombies. By presenting this bizarre combination as a topic for consideration, he both entertained and confused his audience, leaving them pondering the potential and ethical implications. Zombies as test subjects for Hyperloop? They can handle the G-forces. In a conversation about Hyperloop testing, Musk quipped, Zombies as test subjects for Hyperloop? They can handle the G-forces without complaint. Just saying. This tongue-in-cheek remark showcased Musk's ability to insert humor into technical discussions. While clearly not a serious proposal, it ambiguously suggested that zombies, with their undead resilience, might serve unique purposes in testing high-speed transportation, blurring the lines between jest and genuine innovation. The future is weird, and zombies make it weirder, and that's exciting. In a concluding statement at a futurism panel, Musk declared, The future is weird and zombies make it weirder, and that's exciting. We should embrace the unexpected and see where it leads us. This final ambiguous endorsement encapsulated Musk's philosophy of embracing the unknown and the unconventional. By framing the zombie party as part of an excitingly weird future, he left the door open for endless speculation about his true stance, keeping his audience engaged and intrigued. In summary, Elon Musk's ambiguous statements about the zombie party blend humor, futuristic thinking, and deliberate confusion. Through a series of cryptic tweets, offhand remarks, and speculative musings, Musk manages to keep the public guessing about his true intentions, all while maintaining his reputation as a forward-thinking innovator who isn't afraid to push the boundaries of conventional discourse. Bill Gates' take on the zombie party, a series of exaggerated and entertaining critiques. Bill Gates, the billionaire philanthropist and co-founder of Microsoft, is known for his serious approach to global health, education, and technology. However, when it comes to the zombie party, 
Gates has unleashed a series of exaggerated and entertaining critiques that highlight his wit and concern for practical governance. Below, we delve into some of the most common and expected exaggerated statements made by Bill Gates against the zombie party. Zombies in tech? More like the end of innovation. In a keynote speech at a major tech conference, Gates did not hold back. Zombies in charge of technology? That's not innovation, that's the end of innovation. Imagine them trying to code brain would be the only variable they'd understand. Our tech sector would regress centuries. Gates' exaggerated statement emphasized the absurdity of zombies managing technological advancements. By portraying them as incapable of understanding basic programming concepts, he highlighted the potential disastrous impact on innovation and technological progress. Zombie Healthcare, a Prescription for Disaster At a global health summit, Gates humorously critiqued the zombie party's potential role in healthcare. Zombie healthcare? That's a prescription for disaster. They can't even take care of their own rotting limbs. How can they manage a complex healthcare system? This exaggerated critique played on the literal decomposition of zombies to underscore their unsuitability for managing health services. Gates' vivid imagery was designed to provoke laughter while seriously questioning the competence of zombie leadership in healthcare. Economic growth? Zombies would devour our GDP. During an economic forum, Gates made a dramatic point about the zombie party's economic policies. Economic growth under zombies? More like economic decay. They devour our GDP like brains, leaving us with only a pile of fiscal bones. Gates' statement used the metaphor of zombies consuming brains to illustrate the potential economic ruin they could cause. By equating zombies' consumption habits with fiscal irresponsibility, he highlighted the threat to economic stability and growth. Zombies in Education, a Nightmare on Elm Street In a speech about education reform, Gates drew a stark picture. Are zombies running our education system? That's a nightmare on Elm Street. Our classrooms would become graveyards of knowledge, where critical thinking is buried six feet under. This exaggerated depiction played on horror movie tropes to dramatize the potential decline in educational standards under zombie leadership. Gates' use of vivid, nightmare-inducing imagery serves to underscore the importance of competent and visionary leaders in education. Environmental policy? Zombies would accelerate climate apocalypse. At a climate change conference, Gates linked the zombie party to environmental degradation. Zombies in charge of our environmental policy? They'd accelerate the climate apocalypse. Forget reducing carbon footprints, they'd trample the planet into an ecological grave. Gates' hyperbolic statement suggested that zombies would exacerbate environmental issues rather than mitigate them. By portraying zombies as destructive forces, he highlighted the critical need for responsible and proactive environmental policies. Zombies and public safety? Welcome to the chaos zone. In a discussion on public safety, Gates warned about the potential for chaos. Zombies managing public safety? Welcome to the chaos zone. Their idea of law enforcement is probably chasing people down the street. We need law and order, not pandemonium. This exaggerated critique emphasized the potential for disorder under zombie leadership. Gates' vivid description of a chaotic society served to highlight the importance of effective and organized public safety measures. Foreign relations? Zombies would turn diplomacy into a horror show. At an international relations symposium, Gates humorously critiqued the zombie party's diplomatic skills. Zombies handling foreign relations? That would turn diplomacy into a horror show. Our ambassadors would become appetizers, and international treaties would be torn to shreds, literally. Gates' statement used dark humor to illustrate the impracticality of zombies in diplomatic roles. By suggesting that zombies would turn allies into snacks, he highlighted the absurdity of expecting effective diplomacy from the undead. Infrastructure? Zombies would build bridges to nowhere. During a panel on infrastructure, Gates painted a bleak picture. Zombies overseeing infrastructure? They'd build bridges to nowhere. Our roads would crumble, our bridges would collapse, and our cities would turn into ghost towns. 
Gates' exaggerated claim emphasized the potential for infrastructural decay under zombie management. By suggesting that zombies would create useless or failing infrastructure, he underscored the importance of competent leadership in maintaining and improving public works. Innovation? Zombies are the antithesis of creativity. In a speech about innovation, Gates took a jab at the zombie party's impact on creative industries. Zombies are the antithesis of creativity. They'd turn Silicon Valley into a silicon graveyard. Innovation requires fresh ideas, not decomposing minds. This exaggerated statement contrasted the dynamism of innovation with the stagnation represented by zombies. Gates' vivid metaphor served to highlight the critical role of creative thinking in driving technological and societal progress. Leadership? Zombies would lead us into the Dark Ages. At a leadership conference, Gates made a dramatic comparison. Zombies as leaders? They'd lead us straight into the Dark Ages. We need visionary leaders who illuminate the path forward, not ones who drag us back into darkness. Gates' hyperbolic statement underscored the regression that could occur under zombie leadership. By comparing zombies to a force that would reverse progress, he highlighted the essential qualities of effective, forward-thinking leaders. In summary, Bill Gates' statements against the zombie party are a blend of humor, exaggeration, and vivid imagery designed to entertain and provoke thought. Through these exaggerated critiques, Gates effectively communicates the absurdity of the zombie party's potential leadership, emphasizing the need for competent, innovative, and responsible governance in tackling the world's challenges. MAGA supporters' critique of the zombie party, a carnival of exaggerated and outrageous statements. MAGA supporters, known for their fervent backing of former President Donald Trump, have taken a uniquely exaggerated approach in their critique of the zombie party. Their statements, dripping with hyperbole and vivid imagery, highlight their disdain for the undead political movement while showcasing their characteristic style of over-the-top rhetoric. Below, we examine some of the most common and expected exaggerated statements made by MAGA supporters against the zombie party. Zombies are the ultimate swamp creatures. One of the most popular refrains among MAGA supporters is labeling the zombie party as the epitome of the swamp. We thought the swamp was bad, but zombies? They're the ultimate swamp creatures. They're not just corrupt, they're decaying from the inside out. This statement plays on the MAGA movement's deep-seated disdain for what they see as the corrupt establishment. By describing zombies as the ultimate swamp creatures, MAGA supporters emphasize the idea that the undead are an exaggerated, even more grotesque version of the corruption they oppose. Make America Alive Again In a twist on their famous slogan, MAGA supporters chant, Make America Alive Again. This catchy phrase suggests that the zombie party represents a threat to the vitality and prosperity of the nation. We need leaders who bring life to our country, not ones who bring death and decay. This statement uses wordplay to contrast the liveliness they associate with their movement against the literal deadness of the zombie party. It's an exaggerated way to underscore their belief in a thriving, energetic America. Zombies are job killers, literally. MAGA supporters often critique the zombie party's economic policies with dark humor. Zombies are job killers, literally. They leave the brains of our best workers and leave our economy in shambles. This exaggerated claim uses the literal brain-eating habits of zombies to symbolize the economic destruction they foresee. By painting zombies as literal job killers, they amplify their fears about economic downturns under zombie leadership. Second Amendment? Zombies want to take your guns and eat your brains. Gun rights are a cornerstone of MAGA ideology, and they use this to critique the zombie party. Zombies want to take your guns and eat your brains. They'll disarm us and then feast on us. We must protect our Second Amendment rights at all costs. This hyperbolic statement blends fears of gun control with zombie apocalypse imagery. It's an exaggerated way to rally support for the Second Amendment by suggesting that disarmament would leave citizens defenseless against zombies. Zombies are the deep state, undead and unelected. MAGA supporters have long railed against the deep state, and they incorporate this into their critique of the zombie party. Zombies are the deep state, undead and unelected. They're lurking in the shadows, ready to drag us into the darkness. This statement uses the concept of the deep state to suggest that zombies represent an even more sinister and hidden threat. 
By combining fears of the deep state with undead imagery, MAGA supporters exaggerate the threat to democracy they believe the zombie party poses. Zombie healthcare? They'll turn hospitals into morgues. Healthcare is a frequent topic of debate, and MAGA supporters take an exaggerated stance on the zombie party's potential impact. Zombie healthcare? They'll turn our hospitals into morgues. Instead of curing the sick, they'll add to the body count. This hyperbolic claim suggests that zombie led healthcare would be disastrous, turning places of healing into sites of death. It's an exaggerated way to critique the competence and intentions of the zombie party in managing healthcare. Education? Zombies will teach our kids to eat brains instead of use them. Education is another area where mega supporters unleash their hyperbole. Under zombie leadership, our kids will learn to eat brains instead of use them. We need real educators, not brain dead instructors. This statement exaggerates the potential negative influence of zombies on education, suggesting that they would corrupt young minds. It's a vivid way to highlight the importance of quality education and competent leadership in schools. Zombies and national security? They'll invite the apocalypse. National security is a key concern, and MAGA supporters use this to critique the zombie party. Zombies in charge of national security? They'll invite the apocalypse. Our borders will be overrun, and our enemies will feast on our weaknesses. This exaggerated claim uses apocalyptic imagery to suggest that zombie leadership would lead to catastrophic security failures. It's a dramatic way to emphasize the need for strong, vigilant national defense. Foreign policy? Zombies will turn allies into all-you-can-eat buffets. In discussions of foreign policy, MAGA supporters use dark humor. With zombies at the helm, our allies will become all-you-can-eat buffets. We need diplomacy, not dining. This statement exaggerates the potential ineptitude of zombies in diplomatic roles, suggesting that their presence would lead to international chaos. It's a humorous way to underscore the importance of effective diplomacy. The Zombie Party, a one-way ticket to the apocalypse. Finally, MAGA supporters often summarize their critique with a dramatic flourish. Voting for the Zombie Party is a one-way ticket to the apocalypse. We need to keep America great, not drag it into the grave. This overarching statement encapsulates their exaggerated fears, suggesting that zombie leadership would lead to societal collapse. It's a stark way to rally support against the zombie party by portraying it as an existential threat. In summary, MAGA supporters' statements against the zombie party are a carnival of exaggeration and dark humor. Through vivid imagery and dramatic comparisons, they highlight their belief in the importance of strong, living leadership to keep America vibrant and thriving. These exaggerated critiques serve to energize their base and emphasize their commitment to preventing what they see as the disastrous potential of zombie governance. Extreme liberal support for the zombie party, a celebration of inclusion with exaggerated enthusiasm. In a world where inclusion and equality are paramount, some extreme liberals have extended their progressive values to the most inclusive political stance possible, advocating for the rights of both the living and the dead. Their exaggerated support for the zombie party reflects a commitment to universal suffrage and equality that transcends even the boundaries of life and death. Below, we examine some of the most common and expected exaggerated statements made by extreme liberals in favor of the zombie party. Everybody deserves a vote. Extreme liberals have taken the mantra of universal suffrage to a new level. Everybody deserves a vote, whether living or dead. It's time we recognize the voices of the undead who have been marginalized for too long. This statement pushes the concept of democratic inclusion to its extreme, arguing that death should not disqualify someone from participating in the democratic process. By advocating for the voting rights of zombies, extreme liberals highlight their commitment to absolute equality. Zombies represent the ultimate underdog. In their quest to support the marginalized, extreme liberals argue, zombies represent the ultimate underdog. They've been vilified in media and culture, but they have stories and experiences that deserve recognition. This exaggerated claim frames zombies as a persecuted minority, deserving of empathy and support. By championing the rights of zombies, extreme liberals underscore their dedication to defending all forms of life and unlife against discrimination. Living or dead, we all pay taxes.
Extreme liberals make a financial argument for zombie rights. Living or dead, we all contribute to society. Zombies pay taxes too, or at least they did when they were alive. They deserve representation for their contributions. This statement exaggerates the economic contributions of zombies, suggesting that their past lives of taxpaying should grant them ongoing civic rights. It's an argument that seeks to integrate the economic history of individuals into their posthumous civil rights. Healthcare for all, including the undead. Healthcare is a universal right, according to extreme liberals, who argue, healthcare for all means all, including the undead. Zombies have unique health needs that deserve attention and care. This exaggerated claim extends the principle of universal healthcare to include the undead, advocating for medical research and resources to support zombie health. It's a hyperbolic stance that emphasizes inclusivity in the realm of public health. Zombies can contribute to society in unique ways. Extreme liberals argue that zombies bring valuable perspectives. They can contribute to society in unique ways, and their lived or unlived experiences offer insights that can enrich our communities. This statement exaggerates zombies' potential contributions, suggesting that their unique perspective could provide valuable societal benefits. It's an argument highlighting the value of diverse experiences and viewpoints, even those from beyond the grave. Environmental warriors, zombies leave no carbon footprint. In an environmental twist, extreme liberals argue that zombies are the ultimate environmental warriors, they leave no carbon footprint. Their sustainable lifestyle is a model for green living. This hyperbolic statement positions zombies as exemplars of sustainability, given their minimal environmental impact. It's an exaggerated way to promote environmental consciousness through the lens of zombie existence. Education for all, even zombies deserve to learn. Extreme liberals extend their advocacy for education to the undead. Education for all means everyone, including zombies. They have the right to learn and grow, just like the rest of us. This exaggerated claim underscores the belief in lifelong learning, even beyond life itself. It advocates for educational opportunities for zombies, emphasizing an inclusive approach to education that knows no bounds. Zombies in the Workforce, an Untapped Resource In a bid to boost workforce diversity, extreme liberals argue that zombies are an untapped resource in the workforce. They're resilient, they don't need sleep, and they're highly motivated, by brains, but still motivated. This statement humorously exaggerates the potential benefits of zombie labor suggesting that their unique attributes could be advantageous in certain industries. It's a playful yet serious call for inclusion in employment opportunities. Zombies have rights too. Extreme liberals argue for the civil rights of zombies. Zombies have rights too. Just because they're undead doesn't mean they should be denied basic human rights and dignities. This exaggerated stance highlights the belief in universal human rights, extending them to the undead. It's a bold claim that seeks to push the boundaries of what is considered basic human dignity and justice. Cultural enrichment, zombies add to our diversity. In a celebration of cultural diversity, extreme liberals argue, zombies add to our cultural richness and diversity. Their traditions and histories are an integral part of our shared human experience. This statement exaggerates the cultural contributions of zombies, suggesting that their inclusion would enrich the cultural fabric of society. It's a call for celebrating all forms of heritage, even undead ones. Voting rights are human rights, no exceptions. Finally, extreme liberals make a sweeping statement, voting rights are human rights, no exceptions. We must extend these rights to every being, living or undead, to truly be a democratic society. This ultimate exaggeration emphasizes the belief in absolute democratic inclusion. By advocating for the voting rights of zombies, extreme liberals push the envelope on what constitutes a fair and equal society. In summary, extreme liberal support for the zombie party is characterized by a series of exaggerated and enthusiastic statements that reflect their commitment to inclusivity and equality. By advocating for the rights of the undead, they seek to extend their progressive values to the most marginalized group imaginable. These hyperbolic claims serve to highlight their dedication to universal suffrage, healthcare, education, and human rights for all, living or dead. Epilogue In a world where the unexpected is the norm, Seth, the master of stating the obvious, 
brought you the unsurprising news of the Zombie Party's victory in the recent election. From his humble beginnings in Dullesville to his prestigious position as the lead political correspondent for the Daily Nonsense, Seth has never failed to deliver the news that you could have guessed yourself. With his signature flair for stating the glaringly evident, Seth's coverage of the Zombie Party win was as predictable as it was riveting, or not. His talent for turning the mundane into headlines has left readers simultaneously nodding in agreement and rolling their eyes. In conclusion, to all the readers who have followed along with bated indifference, thank you. Your unwavering tolerance for the obvious has made my job as a political correspondent both easy and delightfully redundant. Your support, whether begrudging or enthusiastic, is truly appreciated. As we move forward into an undoubtedly predictable future, rest assured that Seth Sage will be here, ready to announce the next unsurprising turn of events with all the drama of a damp sponge. Until then, stay obvious, stay tuned, and may your news always be as expected as the sunrise. With sincerest gratitude, Seth Sage. Follow me on X, Facebook, and the Gram, or watch my dances on TikTok. Don't forget to purchase my hardcover journal on Amazon as a collector's item. Disclaimer. This audiobook was created with good humor and is intended as political satire and a parody of the two-party election system. The publisher does not take sides, whether conservative or liberal, left or right, Republican or Democrat. Our aim is to provide lighthearted commentary and poke fun at the system and the individuals elected to represent us. All characters and events depicted are fictional and meant for entertainment purposes only. Any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.